Was that you? Lucy is crying. Are you okay? This isn't a joke. Don't respond. Just get out. He continued deeper into the cabin. I let out the breath I was holding. Kim's grip on my arm loosened. As soon as Bobby's steps sounded on the stairs, Kim whispered to me, Run! Get yeah, those, those teenage dinner ladies will be outside. Just go and get, go and get a bit of pie and beans off them. Welcome to episode 45 of Ghost Hands. We've come so far. Oh, we really have, you know, 45. 45. But also, we haven't even been going a year, which is fuck. Isn't that mad? No, I'm not going to say that. No, swear I'm going to say, instead of saying, um, instead of saying the F word, I'm going to say, um, f- Fiddle. F- Fiji. 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 But we haven't. We like, haven't even gone a Fiji year yet. Is, is young. For podcast years. Podcast babes. Yeah, we are. Podcast we are. babes. Um, how many weeks are there in a year? 50 something. 52? Mm, 52? That, mm, right, or is 56. that how many cards are in a pack? We're, f- we're such fidgy idiots. Sometimes I don't know the answer to your question. Fidging idiots. Um, do you like my, um, my tarot spread? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. That's oh, chaos. yeah, you're getting your hair cut tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's the day. I'm going to go for the... It's so dry. Like, what are you going to have? Well, I just need to lop off probably... I like, need to take... I need a hair. A good, like... Three inches. I was off. thinking about getting some like curtain fringe. We're gonna end up with exactly the same hair. Basically. Yeah. Because I'm I need this this fucking fringe can get in the back. I really like that fringe. It's too heavy and I like that on you though. Yeah, I just think it I think it's a really I think it really hides suits my face. You. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like the less no, of you I, I think can it see. does. I think it's really nice. I think psychologically I'm hiding behind a fringe and I need oh, to wow. enter the world. Do you Here know what I mean? Here we go. We've got a breakup. We've got a haircut, of course. Yeah, I of just course. think I needs to, the, the, the fringe needs to be at least swept a bit off my face or shorter. Then sh- chop it off. Highlights. Are you going to do a flob? Yeah. I think I'm just going to wow. go, I just need a, a bit of a lighter, shorter hair off face. Do you know what I mean? Like a more open to the world. Right, okay. That, like it's psychological. Hair is psychological. Hair is psychological, yeah. Absolutely. Hair is psychological. I think it'll look great. I can't wait to see it. I'm very yeah. excited. Getting it done tomorrow. I can't wait. Um, so, uh, you've made an absolute mess of your tarot pile, but it's your pile. It is. So I can't shit on that. No, your you can't. Your pile is your And I pile. know exactly which one I'm going for. Really? Yeah. Okay, go on. Ooh, the claw. That claw. It's this one. <laughs> I'm scared. I hate it. It's the most anxious I've ever felt. Mm, not sure about this. Okay, go on. At all. Um, Talk to me. So this is describe um, the th- the th- like the the, car- the three carrots. Oh, fuck me. Bloody Fudge me. Bloody <laughs> bloody 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 carrots. Oh, he's got he's got three carrots. Oh my god! I just I literally just opened it on that. Freaky. Oh, this is good. Oh, great! No, this is really oh, good because sometimes when the um, the lads have their back to you on these picture yeah. cards, I find it's like it a bit someone's like, leaving me. Yeah, well, oh shit! Three, the three is a sign of progress. The plan is in place, and it's starting to be implemented. Oh yes! Do you know what I mean? Like yes. the groundwork is here. We're on episode forty-five. We're just implementing. No, we're not. You are in your implementing era. Oh, no, 45. Yeah, we're oh, yeah, 45. 45. Okay, yeah, we're on our implementing era. Oh, I really like that. And That's you've got a lovely. lovely robe on. Oh, he has got a nice it's robe. It's a nice on. red robe with a garland around him. Oh, stunning. Yeah, he is stunning, actually. I'd love to see his face. Well, Turn around for us. She's a horny wench. <laughs> um, a horny you think wench. You're, you think you're going through a horn dog era? Hopefully. At the minute, I, yeah, I mean, listen. I wish you all the luck in the world. Just not when it's summer, because no it one wants that. It's still too hot, and I can't. Do you know what? Although by listen the time you listen to this, it's going to be fall. I forgot weather. to tell you this, but when I was at, you know, when we were outside meeting just before we came into the studio, mm. 
Um, I I was stood with Tim having a cigarette. Tim, our editor. Hey, Tim. He's listening right now. Mm. And I didn't say it to Tim because I was I was I was too terrified. This is what was happening. But um, there was a guy that was walking towards us, and I was like, I know you. And I think we had a big love affair on what? Tinder. We never no. actually met, but we FaceTimed loads. No. Oh, like fa- it was during lockdown, which is why we couldn't meet. But we were oh, we were on FaceTime oh like, my God. for like four or five hours a night. Really? Locked, yeah, a well, night. Of course she'd recognise him in the But world. I was like, is it you? And I couldn't, I had to turn away because I was like... Did he clock you? I, no, I definitely saw him. To, and then I, as, I, as I looked at him from around, I was like, there's, there's every... Because he, he used to have like blonde curly hair. Like really blonde. Right. And he's very, he was very I like... I don't imagine that's your type. I reason. don't really have a type. <laughs> just anyone yeah. who comes along. <laughs> I don't really have, it's personality yeah, yeah, of for me. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was very... Wow, it must have been him if you got that mm, job. It was really weird. And I was like, I don't think I can, like, I can't deal with it if we know it's like, how do we fucking navigate that chat? Do you know what I mean? Uh, I think we you... would have better just ignored each other, but... Very yeah. weird. For eight for months and months and months, we would talk on the phone for like five, six hours. God, that is weird. Mm. Although spooky again, like if that's meant to happen, they come out of the woodwork. Like I, I, th- I bet you'll bump into them again. Where you oh, will have so to do the I chat. Don't like It'll be on the it. tube. Oh, like on the tube on the way over. Mm. This has happened to me a number of times. There's been a wasp or moth, <laughs> and it's embedded itself into someone's hair, and they haven't noticed. And because it's like. The rule is on the British tube, you don't speak to people. Yeah. But this girl was like, <laughs> and she was like trying to bat it away. And then it went round and then went into her hair. And I was like, fuck. Did and you I was, notice? Well, I sort of stared at the back of her head for like a good 10 seconds. And I was like, please, 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 please come out, wasp. Because then I'm going to have to be like, there's a wasp embedded in your hair, love. Like, you're going to have to do. And then, oh, no. and then it crawled out of her hair. And that's when I just went down to the other oh, end she of didn't the carriage. Notice. No, she saw something. Oh, it's gross though, isn't it? And I, I hate when you're stuck with a, a thing on the carriage and you can't move and there's a moth. And... Oh, it's just <gasps> awful. Oh, I hate the tube. I hate the tube so much. Okay. Shall um, I do a story for kick you? Kick us off with a story, please, love. I think, I think you're going to really like this one. I can't wait. Okay. This happened when my niece was around 18 or 19. She was living in a city about an hour away to go to college. And she was also... Osco. Osco. Costco. And she was also... She was living in a city about an hour away to go to college and was also working at a restaurant. That night, my husband, baby daughter and I had travelled to the city and eaten at that restaurant where we saw my niece. We said goodbye to her, we left, and we went back to our much smaller city. And instead of going back home, we decided to play cards at another couple's house close by. We stay well past our daughter falling asleep, and we didn't make it back to our house until 3am. We get inside, and our answering machine is loaded with messages. First, my niece asking if I'm okay and to please call her. Followed by several more, with increasing urgency. Then a call from another niece that had contacted that niece who was now also worried. Then we got a message from Kentucky State Police saying an officer was at my door to do a wellness check. We don't even have time to start calling anyone back before the police have returned and they're knocking on our door. They tell me my niece contacted police in her city and said she received a phone call that led her to believe that I'd been in a terrible accident and needed assistance. The police had gone into her town and gone to the location my niece was at but they could see nothing. She'd led them to a field that buttoned... No. She led them to a field that led up to some woods. They wouldn't search the woods for her, though, because they said that their heat sensors were not indicating that there was any wreckage there. They leave, and they contact the police in my town. So now the police have finally located me hours later, and they call her right in front of me to let her know I'm alive, and I hear her cry out in relief through the phone. Case closed cops piece out but what had made my niece react in this way her phone call she's home from work and she's lying in bed with her girlfriend about to fall asleep she had a cell phone and it rang no number so she ignored it then she realized she could count on one hand the number of people who had that number yeah she'd only gotten that phone a week so she did answer 
You should always, always answer a nighttime phone call. Yeah, exactly, just in case. Nothing. Nobody said anything. She repeated her hellos, then said, Look, I can't hear anything, I'm hanging up. Then she heard someone try to speak, but she couldn't make it out. She repeated, I can't hear you. The voice tried harder, but it seemed to have trouble, like they were gurgling on something. My niece got a terrible sense that it was blood and handed the phone to her girlfriend, who was in the military and better trained for someone who may have a medical emergency. The girlfriend asked the person on the phone if they could switch to pushing buttons and yes or no questions. I don't remember which one got two presses. The person on the phone obliged. Fuck. The person on the phone obliges. They establish that yes, there has been an accident and yes, they need help. The girlfriend is trying to get a location, but this yes-no stuff isn't getting it done. The voice starts trying to talk again, this time stronger. It's still low and laboured, but they can tell they're talking to a female and she is pinned underneath something. Through her faint speech and switching to tones any time they could, they learned she was in a vehicle with a man and a baby. She can't tell where she is because she's trapped and it's dark. My niece's girlfriend asks the woman to start naming everything she passed before she wrecked every landmark. My niece is flipping out and is certain it's me and we just never made it home. I just happen to be one of the few people with her phone number. So they jump in the jeep and they start searching for these landmarks. The woman ends up leading them to a field just outside of town. Things start feeling eerie to my niece and her girlfriend. They're no longer in the lights of the town. It's dark and something feels off. They're approaching a curve and the lady on the phone says, I see lights. As they turn the curve, she says, they're gone. The girlfriend stops the Jeep and reverses. The woman says, they're back. So does the girl, does, does the girlfriend think that the woman on the phone is the aunt? Or whoever it is. she All she knows is someone's in oh, distress. Oh, so she's just thinking if it is And her. then we just need right, to find okay. out who it is. Okay. Yeah. The woman says on the phone, they're back. Is that you? Please come help me. Still feeling off, the girlfriend looks at my niece. Headlights pointing straight into an empty field that ends in a tree line and she shuts off the lights. As soon as they did, the voice says, no, come back. Please help me. I'm stuck. They turn the lights back on and start slowly driving off road into the field. They're telling her they can't see her and she keeps saying, well, I can see you. I can see your lights. Please help. They drive only a few feet away and she says, I'm right here. They stop the Jeep, unable to see anything. She says, there, I can see you. Can you see my hand? And the call cuts off. And that's when they contacted the police. The end. What the fuck is that? Unexplained. Can you see my hand? So, my theory is... That is is, so spooky. Isn't it? They've clearly followed what is a ghost on the other end of the line. There's been a crash. There has been a woman who was pinned years and years Years ago. ago. And she's still, to this day, trying to get help with her hand. Oh, that's hard when, you, when someone's always like, "I can see you. Can't you see me?" You're like, no. "Oh, I know. I'm actually Ooh, getting shivers." Yeah, it's creepy. It's creepy. Very nice. Mm. Creepy, 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 creepy. Have you got a story I've for me? I've got a fucking story. I need to stop swearing know, as well. It's outrageous. But you know what? Sometimes awareness is enough. Um. Okay. So I've got one that actually is has a bit of a theme that we've done before. Okay. So this is called Hide and Seek, but it was not us counting. Ooh. We do love a hide and seek story. I did. It's just... Oh, my God. Fucking house. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <gasps> <gasps> Jesus Christ. That was okay, a genuine someone scare someone just me, peeped it? into Did the they f- peep? They peeped. They went it's like Lynn. this. Was it Lynn? It wasn't Lynn, it was a bloke in a t shirt. <laughs> bloke in a wig. <laughs> bloke in a wig. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I hate it. Stop peeking, people. Oh, Jesus, mother of God. God. Okay. The other day, George Osborne was in here 
peeking. I know, he does that. Um, okay, yeah, I, hide and seek is one of the most terrifying things. Have you ever played um, hide and seek in the dark? Like in a dark house? Oh yeah, like sardines. I ha- yes, yeah, but I, I yeah hate that. It's so super I can't creepy. I like it. it though; it's fun. I don't know. It re- I can't do it really. Yeah, big spooky house. No, I can't do it really. A dark, dark road. Um, maybe next time, maybe I'll try and do it at some point. Side note: Are you sure we haven't done this story? Because all hide and seek stories are really chiming. I've, I don't think I. I there are things that I've. I I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. But um, see as we get one. Carry on. Yeah. I mean, let's just fucking see. Um, in my late teens, sorry, I got that wrong already. I'm in my late teens and I always get stuck babysitting my nine year old brother and seven year old half sister. Whenever our parents go out for their date nights, to let me know if something rings true. Yeah. Does it? Mm, it is a bit, but carry on. Okay. Oh, we'll see. Typically, they play while I'm distracted, either on my phone or lost in a binge watch session. That evening, they decide to play hide and seek. My sister, the youngest, started counting while my brother hid. Distracted as usual, I noticed something odd. Her counting began to stretch out eerily. One, two, three. Oh, I'm sorry. Her voice was innocent. Five, <laughs> no, it says. Eight. It says, says her voice was innocent. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, um, this is the bit where this is the bit I remember. I, I thought I would have remembered it if we've done it. Okay. And I don't think we have. Okay. Um, one, two, three. Her voice was innocent, but then it started to shift. Four, five, six. It became drawn out, deeper, echoing as if the walls themselves were joining in. I figured I had been mistaken and my brother was trying to freak us out with some app he found. It got even stranger the more the counting went on. Seven. Then the lights flickered and a chill swept through the room. I felt uneasy, disgusted, you know that feeling? It was like that prickling sensation at the back of your neck after you squish a cockroach. I completely understand what this feeling is. It's fucking awful. Hoping my brother was just playing a prank, I moved towards the kitchen where I thought he'd be messing with the lights. You better not be fooling around, I began, but my words were cut off. A deep and chilling voice, certainly not my brother's, boomed. Darkness engulfed the room. I was frozen in place, as I could only describe the air becoming heavy, and I realised I was holding my breath, trying to listen. But there was simply nothing. Silence. There was no background noise, no air being pushed out of the vents, no creaking of the old house, and no sounds from outside. Just the beating of my heart echoed from the blood pumping through me. I fumbled for my phone, but the flash night wouldn't turn on flash night. <laughs> Flash, a good job I didn't say flashlight, that would have been awful. But the flashlight would not turn on. I was down to 3% and the damn battery saver wouldn't let me use it. I'd accidentally blinded myself in bed last night when I got went to Google something. I launched Chrome with its bright defaults. This is such a like millennial horror story. It wasn't much, but it was enough for the light source. The meagre light from my phone revealed glimpses of our familiar home, but it looked alien in the dim light. The silhouettes of the living room furniture loomed like strange creatures. Our cosy family pictures on the wall appeared distorted and ghastly. The soft, plush carpet felt cold underfoot. And the smell wasn't the familiar scent of our house, but something stale and ancient. I turned to walk across the bedrooms and it almost looked like shadows ran across the walls and away from the light as soon as I held up my phone. But as I glanced around, I did not see them. It could have just been my imagination, but I couldn't help feeling like something sinister was hunting, and we were the prey. Navigating the hall, I peeked into each room, my voice a tense whisper as I called for my siblings. I realised how stupid I was being when I reached my sister's room. I looked down at my phone to call my little brother, Sal, and noticed I had several texts from him. I'd not heard it. There had been no sound apart from me calling out for them. Was that you? Lucy is crying. Are you okay? This isn't a joke. Don't respond. Just get out. Outside, now, the last one read. As a scent of mildew or mould filled the air, I looked up and heard the bathroom door open behind me. Very good. It was a few feet from where I was, but I knew the creak of its hinges. I slowly turned as my phone died. I glanced down to see it powering off and looked up as the silence was shattered. 
the hush gave way to whispers, a thousand overlapping voices yelling at me from far away. Then they all snapped into sync, and two words were clear, and only for me. Found you! The sheer clarity of the whispered words sent chills through me. Hopeless, I ran. My hand was against the wall, looking for a turn leading me back to the living room. I should have only had to walk a dozen steps, but the hall did not seem to end. Whatever had been behind me blocked out any light shining through the windows, and it was pitch black. I ran and ran, but the hall seemed to have no end. I was crying, yelling my brother and sister's names, calling out for them, praying they'd answer. All I could hear in response was a rustling moving closer, like it was being dragged towards me. After what felt like an eternity, I stumbled out of the front door. There had been no turn, no living room. One moment I was running down an endless dark hall and the next I was outside, just as my brother's message as instructed. I looked up to see my sister and brother standing just off the porch looking back at me. Their eyes were wide with terror, faces pale as if drained of all blood. Their hands were clutching each other, knuckles white from the pressure. My sister had tear tracks in her face. My brother, usually so brave, was trembling. I ran up to them jumping off the porch stairs, practically landing on them as I pulled them into my arms. What did you guys see? When did you get outside? I asked them. My little sister was still sobbing into my shoulder as my brother answered. Lucy ran after me when the counting started. We heard it and ran to the back door. Did you see it? My voice trembled as I asked. His eyes darted to the house, lingering, and then back to me. At first we thought it was you, but there was a shadow, like a hand, but not really, moving in the hall. His voice cracked and he collapsed into me. Sorry, he cried before his sobs surpassed our sister's cries. It's okay, we're all okay, I told him. I did not turn back, but I felt like something was watching us. It was on the ceiling, he said in between sobs, still trying to explain. It's over now, don't worry, I said. Just then, I noticed the headlights of our parents' SUV pulling into the driveway and turned back to look at the silent house again before the three of us ran to meet them. We told them what happened and they even called the cops, but there was no sign of any intruder. They brushed off our terror as an overactive imagination. The three of us knew something unnatural had joined us that evening. It had been two months and I still don't know who or what it was. Our parents never did believe us, but I couldn't let it go. The three of us have agreed to tell our parents that we just scared ourselves playing in the dark when they began to mention seeing a therapist. We've been coming up with excuses from family game nights to spontaneous movie marathons to prevent them from leaving us alone ever again. But the reality is, they're planning another date night tomorrow. Despite their disbelief, I've been scouring every corner of the internet, every ancient legend, every whispered town tale, seeking any hint of what invaded our home. We're out of time, and I'm out of ideas. I'm scared it will come back to play tomorrow, and this time, I'm not sure if we'll be as lucky. Oh, my God. Get out the house. Get out the fucking house. Get leave. out the house. Like, let them do date night, but just leave. Go to a five, guys. Yeah. Go to Wagamama's. You go, can stay there forever. And a, yeah, go with, go and like have a green matcha tea at Wagamama's. How old are these kids? Well, I'm got, thinking like seven, these 12, These babysitting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Still leave. Ooh. Because it sounds like Mr. Longhand. Yeah, Mr. we've had a lot of things. We've had a lot of hands. Yeah. Really these yeah. past couple of weeks. Um, um, I love that. Spooky. Well done. Thank that you. was absolutely Thank brilliant. You. What should we have now? I found an abandoned yacht. The food was still warm. We got the distress signal at 2.32 a.m. The signal came via an emergency positioning indicating radio beacon. EPR... Ah, I can't even do the fucking acronym. EPIRB. And it registered a large yacht owned by a man named Daniel Owens. The beacon doesn't send any other information, though, so we had no way of knowing what exactly had happened. At least the weather's good, I said, as we cut across the waves. Yeah, but kind of makes you wonder what happened, doesn't it? Bobby replied, hands gripping the wheel. I don't remember the last time we had an SOS without a storm. Eh, who knows with these rich fucks, Kim replied, <laughs> Sp Jesus. spitting over the side. They do all kinds of weird shit. Kim's right, I'm, I'm team Kim. The ocean loomed ahead of us, pure darkness pierced only by our headlight. No one ever talks about how dark the ocean is. Not a single street lamp or window or car to break up the dark, just pitch black. I think that's what scares me the most about the sea, because mm. there's just nothing endless. else. Endless. It's endless. I know. And there's so little we know. I love the fucking sea. Just pitch black in every direction. Well, 
I could still see the lights from the dock behind us, but it wouldn't be long before they were swallowed up. I'd been on several search and rescue missions before. Thankfully, they'd all ended well. But Bobby was... But Bobby was right. They were all storm-related. Lay people not knowing the wrath of the ocean, thinking they can make a little trip into the water for someone's birthday or whatnot when the sky is raging above them and the waves are swelling into mountains. Respect the ocean and maybe she won't kill you, my mentor had told me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those words stuck with me even a decade later. You've got to respect the sea. You've got to. You've got to. Respect her. And then, before I knew it, we were approaching the yacht. The lights were on, reflecting in the inky black water. Bobby shifted the gears and we pulled up to it, slowly, quietly. That's when I realised how truly massive it was. I guess it was a 50 or 60 footer easily dwarfing our boat. Bobby grabbed the megaphone. US Coast Guard, he said. Can you hear us? Bobby sounds like a dickhead. Nothing. Kim and I started with the rope. As we worked, preparing to board, I kept looking up at the yacht, but from the outside, nothing appeared amiss. Golden light bled out of the tinted windows, reflected, reflecting placidly on the water. I heard low, instrumental music playing somewhere. I didn't see any damage to the boat or people in the water. Kim boarded first. I went next. Bobby stayed in the boat, preparing to search the surrounding water. Kim slid open the glass door. After you. I swallowed and stepped inside. The doors opened into a small but lavishly decorated room. A kitchenette bar area stood to the right and a dining area with tables and booths sat on the left. And that's when I noticed the food. Even though the room was empty, the tables were set with food as if people had just been there moments before. And it's still warm. That's so spooky. Creepy as fuck. Glasses of champagne still bubbling. I would have a sip. (sighs) Oh, yeah, I'd get battered God, and then I'd have my roast chicken dinner and then I'd get on looking for them. Are you mad? If there was a meal that has been prepared on a yacht that, that is still warm and the bubbles are still in the oh, champagne, I want we'd that. be the worst to sat now. down, like, kick your shoes off and have a nice time. Glasses of champagne still bubbling. A fillet of salmon, a few bites missing. Oh, lovely. But Only a few bites gone. Bites missing. Someone's been there eating it. Lipstick smeared on a napkin. I pressed my hand to the salmon and my stomach sank. It was still They were just here. Oh, someone's now got salmon fingers. Mm, fingers. Mr. Salmon Hands. (laughs) I glanced at my watch. 2.51am. They'd sent the SOS not even 20 minutes ago. How did they go from eating and drinking to just nothing? Kim made her way over to me. I checked below deck. There's no one there, she said. The food's still warm. 20 minutes in a salmon. Because salmon cools down very quickly. Mm, maybe it's microwave fish of its cool. life. You know when Sh- not on a yacht. Come that. on, well, come on. I want better. Do you know how much it is to charter a fucking yacht? A lot. It's like a hundred grand minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're giving me microwaved salmon. Listen, they might hate the guests. Jesus, Christ. they must have one good oven. The food's still warm. Her eyes widened. What the hell? Where did they go? No idea. We made our way towards the stairs, towards the top deck. I doubted we'd find them there, but we had to be thorough. The top deck was open to the air. I glanced at the captain's chair, the steering wheel, the little U-shaped sofa behind them. It was empty. Nothing out of place. (sighs) They've got to be in the water, I said grimly. I mean, they're not here, that's for sure. I looked out below us, at the inky black water, the ripples glinting in the light. I turned, looking around the boat into the water. My heart stopped. Where's Bobby? Our boat was still linked with the yacht, but it was empty. Mm. Damn it, he must have boarded, Kim snapped, charging for the stairs. He never follows fucking protocol. I always tell him it's gonna get someone killed, but no, he just has to do do things his way. Her rank grew muffled as she descended towards the deck. I followed her, but Bobby wasn't downstairs. He wasn't in the dining area or in either of the bedrooms below deck. My heart pounded in my ears as I grew more and more frantic, checking tiny closets that couldn't possibly fit a person, opening the storage cabbies that held the life jackets. Bobby! Bobby, where are you? A hand clapped over my mouth. And then something shoved me to the floor. I tried to wrestle away, but then I saw a flash of red curls above me. It was Kim. She was dragging me under the table, whispering, begging me to keep quiet. Squelch. Both of us froze. 
my eyes locked on the source of the noise, and I saw two rubber boots on the carpets, rivulets of seawater dripping off them. Oh, it's Bobby! Bobby's been in the water! I glanced up. Bobby was standing there, it's in the centre of the room. Person. But something was horribly wrong with him. Something's wrong with Bobby! <laughs> He was soaking wet from head to toe. <laughs> Seawater sloshed in his boots. Streams of water ran off his sleeves. His skin was pale and bluish. And there was a patch of white, crusty salt along his jawline, almost reaching his eyes. Uh. And his eyes? They were pure white. Oh. Pupilless, blank. Squelch. Bobby took another step. And another. There is nothing more uncomfortable than wet shoes. Kim's nails dug into my arm. We watched as Bobby, no, not Bobby, not anymore. They continued walking towards us. I held my breath, shutting my eyes. Please don't let him see us, please. Squelch. Two rubber boots right in front of our table. Squelch. He continued deeper into the cabin. I let out the breath I was holding. Kim's grip on my arm loosened. As soon as Bobby's steps sounded on the stairs, Kim whispered to me, Run! I didn't want to, but she shoved me hard and I was rolling out from under the table. I scrambled up just in time to see Bobby freeze on the stairs. He slowly turned around, his white eyes locking on mine. I ran, faster than I'd run in my life. We scrambled out onto the deck, then we made our way into the boat as fast as we could. Kim made it first, then she grabbed my hand, pulling me towards safety. Squelch. Bobby's hand locked onto my ankle. Except they weren't just hands. His fingers were jointless, like tentacles, wrapping perfectly oh, around my ankle. He's turning into a squid! <laughs> yes. He's turning into Bobby's a squid! <laughs> Bobby's a squid! Bobby's a squid! Wrapping perfectly around my ankle, covered in fleshy suction cups. Yeah, he's a squid! And his face? It was rapidly changing. He's a goddamn octopi! Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much a BBQ. <laughs> Before my eyes... His salt-encrusted features were morphing. Oh, it does actually sound delicious, like a salted, oct- mm, salted, salted bit Bobby. of squid. Yes, <laughs> that would be on the menu, salted bobby. Uh, his salt-encrusted features were morphing until I saw a woman, then an older man, his flesh squeezing and bloating into its other mm. forms effortlessly, like an octopus squeezing through a tiny hole. But his eyes always stayed the same, white, blank, empty. This is how I die. But then with a loud pop, I went flying. I crashed into the floor of the boat, pain shooting up my side. By the time I scrambled up, we were several feet away from the yacht, ploughing into the ocean. Back towards home. I was so relieved, so thankful. Whatever that thing was, I'd escaped it. I felt better than I had in years, like all my problems were tiny grains of sand. But now, I'm not so sure. Because this morning, when I looked in the mirror, I noticed my face was encrusted with white flakes of salt. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Zombie squid. Oh, zombie squid. Yeah. Good, eh? What I want to know is what good. happened to the other passengers, the rich twats on the, the yacht. They're all they're all turned into squids at the sea. Oh, so they're just they've gone. living their best monster been, life in the they've ocean. They've gone into the ocean. They haven't bothered coming back uh, up. Because once you're a squid, why bother, so with, why a, why bother with a bit of microwavable salmon? But what's Bobby? Do, is Bobby trying to like just get more zombie population? Is that why he's gone after them? I think zombies taking one. I think zombie. I think Bobby's <laughs> taking one for the zombie team. He's gone off and he's like, "No, you can't sustain with me. Uh, I'll get you." I'll and get then, you, turn you into one of me, and then yeah, we can all be we'll a family we'll all go back the to the sea, and we'll be like, under the sea. Under know, the sea. Da, then, da, that, da, then we'll da, do da, The Little Mermaid da, Part 3. Oh, I see. Because there's already a Little Mermaid 2, Little Mermaid 2 Return to the Sea, so it'll be Little Mermaid 3, Got Octopi you. in the Sea. Octopi. You know. Um, God, do you want another it. story? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. This is called The Ghost of Irish Jim. Ooh. Yes. Ireland. We're back in Ireland. Love us. Um, growing up, the highlight of my summers was visiting my grandpa at his Yorkshire farmhouse. For a boy from Manhattan, it was a magical experience. Okay, so Yorkshire and Manhattan have been brought up. <laughs> Yorkshire, Manhattan and in Ireland. <laughs> Obviously very similar vibes. Um, well, Jim's Irish, but I never said he was in Ireland. 
Oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. the ghost of Irish Jim. Um, there were woodlands teeming with red foxes and badgers to explore, creeks to fish and a ruined abbey to play in. Every evening, my siblings and I would gather around my grandpa and listen to his most wonderful stories. His favourite was the tale of Irish Jim. Jim was the groundskeeper when my grandpa was a boy. He had come over from County Cork in 1932 and was trying to save enough to bring his darling wife and six children over to England. He was a hard-working man, never drank or gambled, never missed a day of work. It sounds uh, miserable. Um, <laughs> yeah, get gambling. Ga- have a gamble, uh, Jim. Come on, get on the slotties. <laughs> slotties. He was saving up every last penny to send back his <laughs> to send back his family. Come on, fuck off. <laughs> get back on the boat. Get back go on the boat. I want to go out and get pissed and <laughs> have sex with prostitutes, and you lot are ruining it for me. <laughs> um, he was saving up every last penny to send back to his family, whom he adored more than anything in the world. On the morning of July 17th, 1933, Jim did not show up to work. One of the farmhands checked his cottage, located about 200 yards from the main house. There, they found him lying in a pool of blood, holding a pair of garden shears. Jim had cut off all his toes and four of his fingers before falling unconscious and bleeding to death. Whoa! Self sabotage. I know it went well. Or oh. suicide. <laughs> Some call it. Yeah. Self sabotage. Well. That's more like um, <laughs> blocking a bloke's number who you fancy. <laughs> Not cutting off your digits. <laughs> I was just trying to put a nice spin on it. No, yeah, oh, it was nice, yeah. Cute Jim. Than, yeah, cute yeah. Jim. Um, a dirty sock was stuffed into his mouth, presumably to muffle his screams. A dirty sock. Dirty, dirty you sock. Dirty sock. You dirty sock. I'm going to call someone sock. that soon. Call it Pete tonight. <laughs> Why would a seemingly sane man do such a thing? The answer was in a letter on his bedside table. In it, his wife said that she did not love him and planned to run off with his younger brother, Dan. <gasps> No! Yep, slag. For God's sake, you um, slapper. <laughs> you fucking slapper. Yo, just to be fair. You're there eating all my potatoes. Do you know and what? And you're though? shagging my brother. No, I have to say, I, I'm i team woman. She's had a she's I'm had not, a hard, no, I say she's slag popped out, and slapper she's popped because out we've six kids. That's true. Right? I'm Jim's saying, just spending all day on the fucking field tilling away. Well, he is sending all the money. Yeah, but she's lonely and Dan. It's there for us. This is like Pearl Harbor. Oh my god! And I hate Pearl. I no, I love Pearl Harbor. I love the film, but Josh Hartnett, oh. Kate Beckinsale, you fucked up. Kate Beckinsale. Okay, I was hoping we could move a glass <laughs> over that. Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. I love that movie. Cork. I love it. I know, but your oh, team, that. Josh Hartnett, and that's. I'm sorry, oh, but... Oh, that bit where he's wearing the necklace and the and the parachute thing is all around him. That is fit, hot. actually. No, so I hot. still... No, because I think he's a fuck... He's oh. a wet blanket. No, he's Josh Hart, no, he's wet. Face. He's wet. Go and find ben your own the, girlfriend. Ben is the wettest. No, Ben is not wet. Look I don't ben, love any Ben's of them. I don't okay. want to. I don't want to go to the dance with any of them. Like they're both a bit shit. Yeah, they are. They've got terrible personalities. They're too serious. They're not interesting. They're very intense. <laughs> I've got no. One of them pretend. Well, dies and just doesn't come back. Spoiler. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Um, and then, but that the annoying thing about Josh Hartnett is he then goes, oh, "I'm gonna steal your girl," and then he goes and like, "Yeah, don't listen to me. Carry on if you've ever seen." If you've never All seen I'm Bill saying is, I have a bit it's of a great sympathy film. for this. Ledger. Okay, and I didn't say slag and slapper. We are retaking that word back, actually, aren't yeah, we? She is doing what, like, and it's the 30s. God, she had no independence. She was She's probably just a baby nil point lay. Yeah, I, 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 maybe Dan is quite dashing. That wasn't the worst of it. She also said that she suspected that Dan was the father of her children. <gasps> oh. So they've been a shagging. They've been a shagging oh, so for a long time. With Dan. Fuck. Yeah. It was said that on some nights, if you peeked into the cottage windows, you could see the anguished Jim mutilate himself. Oh, Jim. But my grandpa warned you were never going to go inside the cottage at night, especially on the anniversary of his death. In 1941, a nine-year-old boy named Jack, who had been evacuated from London to escape the Blitz, was foolish enough to venture inside. The next morning, he was found dead. A rusty pair of shears piercing his neck. Okay, Jim, don't come for Jack. Yeah, it's not on, really. Like, he's just a little evacuee from the big smoke. Jim and Jack. Like, y- you're like, fair enough. Like, go after, yeah. like, maybe adulterers. I know, it's if not on, really. that's your bag, really. is a I don't agree ghost. with Jim's... Jim's not taking oh, the swell. Jim is a ghost. Like, Jim, take... Jim, take umbrage. No, not umbrage. That's bad, isn't it? That's anger. That's, like, you're in Yeah. Take heed... 
from <laughs> our tarot and move on from a disappointing situation, Yeah, and Jim. don't kill kids in the midst don't, of this. Okay, that is a very good message for everybody. Don't kill kids. <laughs> don't kill I kids. Don't, don't, poor little Jack. It's not, I know, I feel quite bad for him, actually. Um... I never really believed my grandpa's stories. He tended to stretch the truth, especially when he did too much whiskey, which was nearly every night. Oh, alky, no alky, alky grandpa. But I still peeked into the cottage, hoping to get a glimpse of Jim. I never did. The summer I turned 11, I finally mustered up the courage to go inside the cottage, which was now a storage shed. On the night of July 16th, I snuck out of bed and entered the cottage. I waited for hours, lying on sacks of grain. Eventually, I fell asleep. This is a very brave 11-year-old mm. and fucking stupid. Um, I fell asleep without seeing the legendary spectre. I was woken by sobbing. A burning candle illuminated the figure of Irish Jim, who was sitting a few feet away from me, holding a letter, tears streaming down his face. He appeared solid, not translucent... <laughs> not translucent like a ghost in a cartoon. Then he noticed me. Without saying a word, mm -mm. he picked up a pair of garden shears and rushed over to me. <laughs> I tried to move but was paralysed from fright. He can't get enough of it, can he? <laughs> when the shears were a foot from my chest, the door opened. My granddad stepped inside, holding a bottle of whiskey. Jim glanced back long enough for me to regain my senses and roll out of the way. Run, lad! My granddad, I don't know what accent that was. Well, it's from York Yorkshire, isn't it? Oh, oh. They're in Yorkshire. Oh, yeah, because Run, Jim's lad! Like, Run, lad! Go on! Get those, <laughs> those teenage dinner ladies will be outside. Just go and get, go get a bit of pie and beans off them. <laughs> Do you remember how amazing dinner, like I, school dinners were? Yeah, I know. Like they were and those women. I no, no, listen. They were the they were the foundation to our society. Mm. They, those women were incredible. Run, lad! My granddad yelled. I scrambled up and sprinted towards the door. About fifteen feet away, Irish Jim followed. Oh no, hang on. I scrambled up and sprinted towards the door, about 15 feet away. Irish Jim followed, his footsteps getting closer. I thought I wasn't going to make it, but when I was five feet from the door, my grandpa hurled the bottle. I heard the sound of glass breaking and a muffled cry. Don't look back! Keep going! My grandpa shouted. I did, but Jim quickly regained his... This doesn't sound like a ghost. This sounds like an actual man. Yeah, just an axe murderer. When I was nearly at the threshold, the phantom grabbed my shirt. My grandpa, was surpri with surprising strength for an old man, yanked me away from Jim and we tumbled outside. The ghost stood in the doorway, staring at us, but he made no attempt to follow us outside. You're safe, my grandpa said. He can't leave cottage. I encountered him myself when I was about your age and I just barely escaped. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen him since war, though. Thought he had finally found rest. Luckily for you, I, uh, I stepped out for some fresh air and I noticed a light coming from cottage. I thought that some local lads might be drinking inside, so I decided to investigate. Mm. Come on, follow me and let's head back and try and get some rest. I'll have the old co cottage demolished tomorrow. <laughs> Of course he will. I don't think it's that this easy. This guy's amazing. I love this grandpa. Uh, I'll just, don't worry, but I'll just have Alt Cottage demolish tomorrow. Maybe then old Jim will finally be able to find some peace and stop murdering kids. Stop murdering kids, Jim. We walked back towards the house, my grandpa holding my hand. When we were about 50 feet from the cottage, I took one look back. Irish Jim was standing in the doorway, tears streaming down his face. I will fucking choose, Jim. The end. Like, I love that he's no, like... No, I don't think he's upset about the kids. I think he's still crying about his wife. Of course. But then, do you know what? This is classically like, don't oh, be with God. someone who's your world. And... Jim, you'll men, be okay on your Men own. need to understand how to show emotion. I'm like, I get it. You're cut up about the fucking... But who divorce, really cares? But don't cut up the kids. Don't cut up the kids. <laughs> just... Don't cut up the kids. Do you know what? Like, Jim, all you were doing was working... And sleeping and working and sleeping and, and working sleeping, and, and working, working and, and yeah, whatever. And then, so w when she left you, you could have gone out and gambled and drank and have a gamble, have a drink. Go to the strip club, Jim, oh, for God's sake. Meet Don't a kill lovely kids. go go girl. Be a go go girl. Nipple tassels for days. Yeah, get some tits in your Stop face. Stop killing and the kids. Get over it. Yeah. Stop going for Jack and Jim. And tits, not kills. It's not kills. Go on, Jim. Um, love it. Okay. Well, I enjoyed that, but sometimes uh, some of these men in these stories really get on my bloody yeah. They really death um, ass. They okay. really count my chickens. This happened years ago, but it's something that I think about often. 
especially lately for some reason. Back when I was in high school, I sat behind an autistic classmate named Richard. He was a savant. I'm not going to go any further because I need to know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what a savant is. Um, bear with me. One. Uh, I think it's... I think it's someone... Is it a savant? Like, like, I, think I, it's like it's like old premonition. Time, I think it's an old-timey sandwich maker. Oh, no. Savant syndrome. Here we go. Um, savant syndrome is a phenomenon sometimes following a brain injury where someone demonstrates exceptional aptitude in one domain. Oh, okay. Such as art or mathematics, despite significant social or intellectual impairment. Okay. So, like, like mystifyingly clever right, at yeah. one particular thing. Yeah. Okay. So, Same. yeah. Back when I was in high school, I sat behind an autistic classmate named Richard. He was a savant with a photographic memory and other amazing talents like the ability to calculate the day of the week from any date, etc. He was always quiet, well behaved. What do you mean? As in you could be like Tuesday the 21st of February 2022. Oh, no. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> me too, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, you know what I mean. You don't see right, the day okay. and he knows the So you the could day. just say the date and he'll be like, oh, yeah, like Sunday. Yeah, like 20th September 1987. I mean, there's one in seven chances you're going to get it, right? 20th of September 1987. My birthday. Thursday. Nope. Guess again. Wednesday. You have three guesses. You're going to get it right so on the last one. I've only got one more. Saturday. Uh, no, I'm a Sunday. Sunday's child. I'm oh, so close. I'm so very so godly. Do you know what I mean? What is it? What, where does the thing go? Monday, Sunday's I'm... child is the best. All the others are twats. No, that was not... <laughs> Uh -huh. I'm Wednesday, so Wednesday's child is full of woe. Oh, Ooh, fitting. Full of woe. And Sunday's child is... Full of woe! Well, no, and then it's Saturday's child is <laughs> I really like that. something in gay, and then uh, Sunday's child is a massive wank stain. No, it doesn't say that. It says Sunday's child is like Bonnie and pretty... Bonnie and, and gay, yeah. And gay and loving life and really fit. Okay, uh, can we get back into the story, please? Mm -hmm. He was always quiet, well-behaved, and just sat through class without speaking. One day, I'm bored in class while the teacher is lecturing, and I decide to yell Richard's name in my head, just for the hell of it. I'd read about savants and some of the incredible abilities that they have, and for whatever reason, that day I was curious if he would somehow be able to hear my thoughts. I stared at the back of his head, concentrated real hard, and began yelling his name, but purely in my mind. I didn't make any noise at all and he was sitting in front of me, facing the opposite direction so there was no way that he could see me. After yelling his name in my head for about two minutes out of nowhere, Richard stands up from his desk and yells to the teacher, Teacher! Teacher! I'm right here! While waving his arms. I was shook. All my classmates thought it was odd because Richard is usually very quiet, but they brushed it off once the teacher calmed him down and he sat back down. I tried yelling his name in my head again, but he didn't respond after that. And I'm not sure if he couldn't hear me or just decided to ignore it. And it's it. kind of torturous as well. It's mad, isn't it? But I'm completely convinced that he heard me the first time because there's no way that he just acted that way by pure chance. He'd never done that before and he never did it again after that. Since that day, I've been a believer in telepathy or the capability to share thoughts. I don't think you necessarily have to be autistic, but perhaps those with autism or savant syndrome can pick up on these things better. I never would have felt this way if I hadn't had this experience myself, as I'm a very rational person, but this experience has convinced me that there's more to life than the, uh, mm, has convinced me that there is more to life in the world we live in than our current understanding. One hundred percent agree. Isn't that weird? Yeah. And that's like a true experience. Shall we try it now quickly? Uh, do you remember we did this before and it didn't quite work? <laughs> well, maybe but... we're a bit better right now. Okay. I think of a word. You're going to think of a no. You're going to think of a word. Okay. And you're going to think it to me. Okay. I wonder um, if I'm going to hear it like in my actual ears or I'm going to hear I it. I tell in my you mind. what, take your headphones off. Okay. I'm I'm going to whisper the word I'm going to try and say into the mic. Okay. You have to shut your ears okay, so you on. don't. Yogurt. Okay, I'm really going to try and get yogurt into Anderson. Got one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. doing it now. Oh, sorry. I'm doing it okay, now. Okay, hang on. Let me get you in can there. put your headphones back on. Because I think I had a word and then. I don't want that. Okay, I'm really, I'm really sending it to you. This is not good podcasting, is it? Really? I'm sent it to you. I'm sending it to you. 
Okay. Yellow. Well, you've got the first letter right. <laughs> Okay, great. That's think, a good no, start. no, I do think it's a good start. That's really, a very promising start. Um, maybe I'll try the next letter. Maybe send me the next letter. Let's see if, we, if we've got the first letter. We may as well see if we can. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm still thinking yellow. Is it E? <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's not E. Um, go, keep going. I'm sending it to you. Is it A? No. So is it O? Yes. Fuck off. Are you yes. joking? No, it's O. That no, that is really why? weird. Why you said E? No, so why I, is that weird? no. Listen, I was I said E because I was joking because of yellow. But when you, when I said, is it actually O? Yeah. That's re that's no. Honestly, what? because when I said E, I went okay. Right, let's focus now. Yeah. And in my head, a ring came. I was towards sending a me, ring, and I thought, what the fuck is that? And then I saw. I kind of thought, no, I don't think it's that. Maybe it's an A. So I went A, and then immediately, which is why I immediately went, was it an O? Because I saw an O initially. <gasps> that is yeah. fucking terrifying. Is so, it an O? Why O? Yeah. But now it's, it's going to become many. more guesswork. Well, yeah, of course it is. But I, I actually don't have any idea what it could be. Shall I send you the next letter and then we can move on? Yeah. Okay, okay. here we go. So I'm kind of seeing... I'm kind of seeing a V, but I don't... But it could be a U. Mm. U. No. Fuck. And I was really what is sending it. it. it what a, is it? It's a G. Yogurt. Yes. Well, that's a guess. <gasps> Mad! Oh really? My God. That's. Do you know what? A bit spooky. I would bit say spooky. there was an element of that. I I almost feel like with this kind of stuff. Yogurt. I genuinely do think. If you, you, it's like training a muscle, like at the gym. Yeah. I think if you really get into. I like, think we should do this every week. Yeah, I think we, I should, think we should start try training our. It, Imagine if we became. T I would fucking love that. Telepathic. <laughs> it'd be so useful at comedy gigs. Oh, I'd be like, be twat, so twat, twat, twat. You'd be like, well, to be fair, I kind of know when you think someone's. Glass to pover, to pover, glass, glass to pover, to pover, glass, glass to pover, to that would be oh good, my it? God. Sorry, that was I did that really and then my and then I had like a little burp. <laughs> um okay. that is weird. I, I really enjoyed that story. No, that was no, I really like that. Because I do, you know, like and and obviously like all the naysayers would say, well, maybe Richard just stood up and said, Teacher, I'm here out of Yeah, but if that's not out of his but character. You just think Oh god. That's pretty bizarre. I'm gonna start it? trying that on the tube. Just start sending um, messages to people and see if they look round and go, Oh, oh lovely. Um, are we ready for Creep of the Week? Boom! Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. get that you do that, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, okay, this is from Aid. Hi, Aid. Hi, Aid. Um, so Aid's story is as follows. I was house sitting for my parents. They hadn't lived in the house very long. I came home after a 13-hour shift and it was almost midnight. I made a cup of tea whilst waiting for a bath to run. I hung on the lounge door was a football on an elastic string that goes around your waist to help you to do kick-ups. Mm. I don't really understand football, but you do. Don't you? Mm, no. Um, okay. I sat down with my brew and as I lifted the cup to sip, the ball came across the room knocking the cup out of my hand. I was in the house and on my own. I told my parents and they said they'd never felt right in that house. Turns out the previous owner died in the hallway and was undiscovered for weeks. Oh. So Aid sent us that, because obviously we have so many to get through. Yeah. Um, but then he also sent another one. Oh, lovely. Afterwards okay. and like said... Like an update. Like, well, not really, but another paranormal experience. Okay. Um, he said, I've also just had another paranormal experience on the motorway at about 4.30 a.m. I don't want to know what shifts this Ooh. guy's... This stretch has no street lamps, so it's pitch black. It was just me plodding along, really. It was mid-January, so quite cold. I checked my, uh, I checked, oh, I checked my mirrors religiously, and there hasn't been another car for a while. When alongside me pulls up a small convertible with the roof down and a male driving it, all lights on, but they turned and waved and sped off. But they didn't drive; it just faded away. Oh no! That's fucking weird. Someone at night time, or like in that time in the morning. I know. Stopping. To, I would January with the top down. That killer. is awful. Yeah. 
Oh God, he's been spooked to shit. You've been really haunted, Aid. If there are, if no. you, if you have any other experiences, do let us know because that is friggy. Just like a Ferrari spinning off into the distance. I just, well, I also hate people who, I was going to say, I also hate people who drive convertibles, but I know a lot of people who do, so I'm going to stop. Oh, do you know what? I love, I that. love a convertible. Um, I don't drive, but. But me, I like to be in the driving uh, seat. Yeah. When the I dri- driving when seat? No, the, the passenger the passenger's seat. seat. When we drove, uh, <laughs> when we drove in California, having a Mustang was like the fucking best oh, thing. With the, the top down. Best. As mum's got a mini with the, the top goes I down. I love there as a well. convertible mini. Yeah. Oh. So we're gonna take the mini one day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> could you please drive me around to the mini with yeah. the top down? When come along. Well, the weather needs. Well, the weather is fucking good right now. Um, I can't complain. Um, I right. Won't complain. Anna. Is it time? It's time. What do I have to do? Oh my god, what are you doing? Oh no. What is happening? Mm. Okay. So. Oh Jesus. Right, hang on. You need your torch on, on your phone. Okay. And you've got a little mirror. Mm. Mirrors scare me more than... Okay, so... My eye is still a bit weird. Um, Right, Hannah, you need your torch from your phone to Mm -hmm. do this week's We Get Haunted so you don't have to. I want you to shine the mirror... Yeah. ...into the... the Shine the torch, yeah. yeah. I can see just your eyes there. Oh, that's very good. Okay. Right, I want you to look into that mirror. I can't really see. Oh, it's fucking, how fucking small is it? Oh, there we go. Can you see your eyes? Yes. Okay, amazing. Now, concentrate God, on your... my makeup your, is not good today. Concentrate on your eyes. Lock eyes with yourself. I've got a bogey. Okay, can you please concentrate? Very doing, hairy nose for a woman. Could you please... Hello? Yeah, sorry, I am, I'm in. Sure? Yeah. Fine. Lock eyes with yourself. Fit. Whisper out one thing you can't live without. This is your safe word. What do I have to tell you? Just say it now. D- cigarettes. Don't think about it. Okay, cigarettes. That cigarettes now is your safe word. Next, utter the thing you desire most. Go. Um, a holiday. Fine. Cigarettes and holiday. Now, Very shallow person. Look at the light shining. Mm. And say these words. The light in my hands is my ally. Hang on, do I have to do it at the light say, or my eyes? Look at the light. It hurts. Say, the light in my hands is my ally. The light in my hands is my ally. And so it shall protect me. And so it shall protect me. And so I shall do for it. And so I shall do for it. Blink, blink once. <laughs> blink 182. <laughs> blink 182, my favourite band. Now look back up at the mirror... And resume immediate eye contact with your reflection. No matter what you see, keep eye contact and do not blink. Oh no, that's fucking hard. I want to blink already. Don't blink. Don't get distracted. Don't. I'm gonna. Your doppelganger will appear if you do. Oh what? Don't do it. You can't blink. No, I'm gonna blink. Oh my God, don't. Don't. (laughs) Don't do it. Come on then, what do I assume? Never blink again? Ignore the urge to blink. Even if it feels like hot needles, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Keep eye contact and say, you must leave now or the light will expel you. You must leave now or the light will expel you. Can I blink now? No. You must now fulfil your end of the bargain. What? Turn the light off. I can't. Have you blinked? No. I Are haven't. you sure? Yeah. Count to ten. One. Look at your reflection. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two! Ah! <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, my God. Uh, The next morning, tomorrow morning, open your door and the thing you need will come to you within a week. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. I basically just got you a holiday there. Oh, legend smashed it. (laughs) If you happen to look away, by the way, at any point or blink, you'll see shadows behind you crawling in your vision. No, I never did. But I I will check on the... Check. I never blinked. Okay. Well then, holiday, I wanted to, but a I holiday's never did. coming your way, baby. Oh yes, small um, dudes, please. Thank you so much. We're just silhouettes at this point. If anyone's watching on video, um, 
thank you. That has been episode 45. Um, uh, stay haunted, stay time. spooky, and we'll see you next week. And sign up to Patreon, guys, because we went to 30 East Drive, and that will be out at the end of the month. We have a full ghost hunt for you. I think by the time they're Every listening, month. it will be, it'll be out. Oh, yeah, it will already be out. We have a full ghost. There's about five ghost hunts on there now. Full length. They're like films. They're full length go- uh, episodes. Blockbusters. We have weekly bonus hunts after dark. There's so much content on there. Go and get it. It's only £4.50 a month. You're amazing. We love you all. Goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.